are. Hi, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Steam Gauges Recalibrated mod, which was originally made by forum user Trueborn. It's now been adopted by Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a load of analog style gauges for you to use in flight. And I absolutely love this thing, as not only are the the various gauges quite cool, but they offer you a new way to get your information while in flight that offers you some pretty decent levels of customization. So let's jump on over to a plane I've got on the runway and have a look at what all we do get here. Now right off the bat though, I should mention there are some other mod dependencies to get this thing to work. So you are gonna need the click-through blocker, toolbar controller, and the space tux library. Now with those installed, you're gonna get this lovely little button here, which will open up our Steam Gauges UI. And this, right in this just one box, will probably be what you use most often, as it's the basic settings. We do have some more advanced ones down here we'll get to in a little bit, but let's talk about the basic ones first. And the big thing to talk about here is the gauges themselves. You don't have to have all of them on or all of them off. You can turn them on individually. And as for what gauges we do have, we have a radar altimeter, a magnetic compass, an electrical gauge for your battery needs, a fuel gauge, an orbital gauge, a rendezvous and node gauge, which we'll come back to here in a little bit, we have an air gauge for your air intake, a navigation gauge, which is my favorite, more on that in a second, and a temperature gauge. And these are all of our different analog gauges that provide you essentially all the same information you're gonna get from our typical things here, but offering it to you in a new way with a little bit of extra stuff. For instance, the navigation gauge, by far my favorite. This thing is great because it is a functioning navigation gauge to help you find your way to other places. So for instance, and in how you use this, is we go up here to the navigation select button, and when you first turn it on by default, the navigation is selected to this runway right here. If we hit that button though, Oh look, it's now pointing over at the island runway, over that way. And it shows you the distance of 33 kilometers and your ETA for, you know, once you're up to speed and the arrow pointing you where you need to go. I love this thing, it's awesome. And you can cycle through basically the different airstrips and whatnot that do exist out here in the game, which is always handy. But you don't have to select it just by hitting this navigation button. We can also go into the map, and if we move this around, and say just right click on the desert airfield, hit activate navigation, and boom, it changes. Wanna go to the Woomerang launch site? Boom, it changed. I love that. So you have two different ways of controlling this, either through cycling through nav points, or through going to the uh, map itself which is pretty darn cool. Now there's one gauge I haven't talked about yet and that is the HUD and that's because I wanted to go through the analog ones first. Well, until we come back to the rendezvous gauge and the node gauge. Again, more on that in a moment. The HUD though is the one and only digital one here and it is of course a proper full heads up display. I love this thing, especially in the IVA mode when flying a plane. It just makes sense to have a HUD here. It's really cool, but of course you can have it on or off, whether you're here or out here, you can just click it there, which is pretty neat. Now, as for the other options here, we do have transparency, so for the gauges, the analog gauges here, we can change their transparency to mostly, you know, well, entirely opaque, or down to mostly translucent, which is pretty cool, and anywhere in between. We also have the HUD opacity, as it has its own separate transparency there, where you can make it entirely invisible or fully visible there. Very nice indeed. 
Now, other options, we have the bezels. This is for the gauges. The bezel is the big chunky bit around that you can turn on or off if you so desire. We can also lock the gauges into position. Now, by default, you can click and drag any of these things anywhere you want them to be, release, and it will stay there. The problem, of course, if you're clicking through stuff, you could, you know, accidentally move a thing. Or more typically, you know, when you're moving the camera by clicking like this, if I'm over the top of the HUD, oh look, I'm moving the HUD. <laughs> but if we lock the gauges in place, well, look at that, I, I can't click these things to make them go, which is pretty neat. So we can actually keep them on or off, so if you want to move them, you can, if you don't, you don't. Now, I do want to mention something on the moving. Wherever you place the HUD or the gauges, it's a global setting. That is where it will always be whenever you switch back and forth between crafts. It's gonna stay there, which is nice. So once you have your uh, gauges in a layout you enjoy, you're not gonna have to set it ever again. You just deal with it. It's pretty cool. Downside is, of course, is if you want a different setup between different ships, you are gonna have to manually move it, but that's it. Now, the last option we have here in the basic one is the show gauges when UI is hidden. By default, whenever we hide the UI, these are all gonna stay. And I love this because now with these gauges, I don't need the UI. I have all the information I need right here, especially with the HUD, it's cool. But if you want to say like take a screenshot or something, you can just click that off and boom, now they're all hidden. Very easy. Now as for the advanced settings, we're actually gonna gloss through a lot of these because a lot of them are the same thing. So for instance, the temperature gauge down here, every one of the gauges has an option for scale, defaulted to 50%, but you can put it all the way down to 11% or all the way up to 100. So you can change the size of this thing to whatever you desire, which is pretty cool. Now, some of the other gauges have some additional things, like any of them that have lights, you can adjust the color of the light, and some have things like with the radar altimeter, you can calibrate the meters or you know, whatnot there, you can have the cutoff altitude. For the fuel gauge, you can change the lights there. For the orbital gauge, you can have a safe altitude, a burn window, the circular circularization threshold, and all those sorts of things are available for you to mess with, which is cool. Now the HUD has by far the most customization here, as first off, we can change its full color here in the HUD settings. So if you don't like the default green, well, you can switch that to whatever you want. Just adjust these gauges to make it whatever you find most visible. Now we also have this little central bit here, that's the high contrast bit, and you can turn that to have its own individual color here, again adjustable by these sliders, or just make it so it matches with whatever setting is right here. Personally, I prefer having it have a different color so that when you're moving, that thing's, you know, moving along, basically, you know, matching up with that sort of info there. Very neat. Now we can also turn on or off all the uh, various bits of the actual uh, instrumentation on the HUD. So say for instance, uh, the throttle. Throttle is right there and we can turn that on or off. And same thing with the indicators, they're right there. We can turn those on or off. So we have a lot of customization there. If you find this whole thing a little bit too cluttered, you can adjust it as you see fit. Now another fun thing is you can have it set to only be in the IVA, so if I click that you can see it immediately disappears from here, but if we go into here it pops back up on its own. Now also in the advanced settings you can change its scale just like with any of the other instruments, so we can make that smaller or larger. You can then also center the HUD with that button, which is very handy because whenever you scale it, it kind of goes wonky like that to the side. But uh, quite nice there because then you can just center it back up and you're good to go. And finally, there is a key that you can assign to it so that you can turn it on or off manually as well. Just a lot of fun options there. Now. Now it is time to talk about the rendezvous gauge and the node gauge. Now let's talk about the rendezvous one first because we can talk about that pretty quickly here. So if I click on this ion powered space probe I've got over on the uh, launch pad, well boom, there you go. Rendezvous gauge has turned on. 
And if I turn that off, boom, there we go. The rendezvous gauge disappears. So now that I have that defaulted to on, it'll just pop up. Now, once it is there, I can turn it on and off there. And of course, adjust its bevel as well. Just whatever you wanna do, but you have that full thing right there. Now, what's also cool is the HUD. Oh yeah, I have that still turned on to the IBA, don't I? I do, there we go. The HUD, now you can see that I have a rendezvous the rendezvous information is there. And again, if we turn that off, it disappears. If we rendezvous again, boom, it comes back. Very cool. And the node gauge is the same deal. Now, other gauges have that as well. So like, for instance, if you're in a rocket and you're in space, the air gauge is not gonna show because there's no air in space. So that gauge will disappear. And so it's pretty cool that as certain things happen, either interacting for rendezvous, creating a navigation node, or going into space, certain things will automatically go on or off. But let's also talk about another thing that changes real quick, because we're gonna have to switch over to the rocket to uh, do the node gauge. So let's switch over there and watch the HUD. It changed. I love this. That is honestly, after the navigation gauge, my favorite feature. There is a different HUD for whether you're flying an airplane or you're flying a rocket. And there is a third one for when you're in space. So very cool indeed that it does, again, just like the gauges here for when you're in different scenarios, the HUD also does change. And this is my favorite of the changes because it matches this nav ball. But honestly, I see this a lot more readable than the nav ball. I can actually see those degrees. I have a hard time seeing this with my poor eyesight. So I can very easily see the 70 degree mark there for when you're flying around. That's pretty darn cool. And if we do go up into orbit, you'll notice it change again to the orbit HUD. Again, just a nice cool feature there. And of course, now that we are up in space, you'll notice the uh, radar altimeter is gone. So is the air gauge, cause well, we're in space. And if we go into the map and create a navigation node, hey look, a new thing. It's kind of weird looking because there is a slight bug with this. The uh, node gauge doesn't show all of its stuff in the map. If we leave the map though, boom, there's the rest of the gauge in all of its glory, showing your delta V, your time to burn, all the good stuff. But in the map, for some reason, it's only showing that little rounded bit. But just like with the rendezvous that was on the HUD, we now also have our burn node navigation stuff here on the HUD as well, along with all the new HUD stuff for being in orbit here. It's just, oh, it's so cool. I love it. I really do. The HUD is, well, the navigation is by far my favorite. The HUD is my second favorite thing in this because it just gives you so much information on the go. It's just amazing. And I do like that the navigation thing actually does still even work in space. But of course, in space, it's a lot less useful because you're in orbit. You're not really going to be navigating to the airfield like you would flying normally. But overall, this is just an absolutely amazing mod with a load of customizable features here. The ability to have whatever gauges you do and do not want with a few cool options in that regard and even its own mod ability to, you know, take away gauges that are no longer useful so there's less clutter automatically are all really cool things making this just an amazing little mod. So if you'd like to take a look at this one for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is gonna be it for this one today. So hopefully you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, uh, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.